DeCopo, our dear friend, is here at the desk. Yeah. We've got Tony. I know. Can we keep Tony every day? Every day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We love you so much. Can I go first? Yeah. Uh, it's all Do you. Do it. Take it. Go for Your it. Your story. All right. Here we go. First up, Insider reports that Hugh Jackman, who recently concluded an 11-month run on Broadway starring in The Music Man. I saw him. He was wonderful. He was terrific. He said, though, he actually thinks he did permanent damage to his vocal cords from all the growling he did as Wolverine in the X-Men movies. Mm. Huh. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, wow. Look at that image. Oh, oh hi. Hello. Yeah. So that's not a tattoo there. That's, Sorry uh... about the voice, uh, but thanks for your service. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. That's why I turned down the role of Wolverine. I was like, my voice is too important to me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Plus, I was less Wolverine and more Ben Vereen. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> It just didn't work. <laughs> Do you have a, a Wolverine growl that you'd like to debut here? Well, does anyone remember how exactly he did it? I think like, it's just sort of a scratchy, something uh, low. Like, uh, uh, I go, oh, wait, no, no. sorry, Tony, what was that? And I actually think it was good that no one really heard it. No, uh, I want to hear it. I'm going to keep that one trapped inside. Do no. one, one more little. <clears throat> oh! in every way yeah. I love it. How would you do Wolverine? <laughs> hey, hey, I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's a different take, an artistic that impression. Works. I love it. I love a good hiss. I mm -hmm. hiss all the time. It really gets the point across. <laughs> all right, next, Department Therapy reports on the most romantic thing that you can add to your bedroom, according to sexperts. You want to hear what it is? Yeah. Yeah, you do. It's a full-length mirror. Located where? I know. That's what I asked. Are we talking wall, ceiling? They say it's a huge turn-on to watch how your partner's body reacts to touches in a mirror. So, Ross, Tony, do mirrors do it for you? That'd be a no for Matthews. I'm good. <laughs> Listen, I'm fine seeing you, but I do not want to risk seeing me. You know? Like, that is... There's a time for self-reflection, and when you're nude is not it, dear. That is not the time. So you are a lights-off lover, then, that would mean. Lights off. Can I put on an eye mask? I'm good with that. I'm good. Oh, that that's, hey, there's a kink to that. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Oh, there's a whole group that's maybe, down with eye masks. Maybe I Tony, do mean it like mirror that. mirror or to not mirror? Uh, we do have a, a stand-up mirror, and I do think it is exciting for a couple reasons. Why? The lights on, I think, do work. And I love uh, I, lights on. And secondly... I find not the touch being what I like seeing reflected, but when, when my wife is standing in front of the mirror, whether she's getting ready for something or ending her day, seeing her look at herself and seeing the reflection is like me looking at her from the outside, but then I get to step into the scene. And that dynamic... Do you see what I'm saying? Do you I think see it's so lovely. what I'm saying? You and your wife are serious goals. We are, we are deeply, madly, wildly, crazily in love. Uh, and... <laughs> And Tony will always encourage me, you know, when I say, I don't know, I've been single for so many years, I just don't know. You, to, you always encourage me to be open-minded and that there's great love out there and that it's, you know, it's your truth and the, the truth exists. And we need people like that and, in our lives to keep us believers. And mating in captivity is possible. Oh. Married sex is still very good sex. Yeah, is it really? Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. with that mirror in the back. I know. All right, next up, Associated Press reports, if you don't like the way your signature looks, you know, when you write your name, well, you can now pay a signature doctor to create a new one for you. Prices range from $10 to a few hundred bucks, and they usually include instructional sheets and videos so you can perfect your new John Hancock. And if you want a new signature, signature, <laughs> um, they say you should practice for three days, 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day, and you can perfect it once they create one for you. Would you want a new one? I don't, what do you, I mean, what are you using a signature for in a public way? I'm used to just signing, like, you know, receipts with my finger, the digital screen thing, where you're right. just like, Mwah. Yeah. I know, those all look the same. They all look the same. Point. I've seen people just touch the screen, they just do a little dot. Boop, yeah. Boop. Yeah. 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 But, um, I think handwriting in general, because we type so much, everything now looks like a serial killer when I write it. It just looks like... Ta like, yeah. just like it's an EKG, like... Yeah, I, I can't even read my own writing anymore. Yeah. Are you... What's your, uh, what's your signature like, it, Barrymore? Well, 
That's like my signature and looks I hate like, it. Looks like be right back. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> You're totally right. Depressing and yeah. like, when anybody kicks it old school and actually asks for an autograph, of which I love because it's such a lost art, because, you know, growing up back in my day, you know, they liked autographs. There was no phones, you yeah. know. <laughs> you signed a piece of paper and that's what you did. Mm -hmm. So I have always wanted to improve my signature and I really might try this course. I think you should because it does, it almost looks like you wrote dribble. It's, it is <laughs> dribble. It's terrible. <laughs> that is my awful signature and I'd like to change it. So I appreciate that story. All right, Tony's sticking around. This is a very important book that Tony and I have been discussing and we're actually going to make a meal from it with um, his favorite chef, Tamar Adler. It is so meaningful. It's about how you approach leftovers. Yes. That's right, and we Actual, all have them. real deal leftovers. And she is a chef and she's super fancy, but this is the cook who taught me how to be a cook. Wow. I also, you can go in the index and look up the leftover you have, and then she gives you all these imaginative ways. It stops food waste. This is so important. I can't wait. Let's go to the kitchen. Let's do it. Let's right. go!